And we are live and on the air. My name is Omnidog from Omnidog's Vault. And with me tonight on the Omnibros live show, we have Comics Guide 101's Lou. Lou, how's it going? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Jess. How's it going, man? Good. How you doing, buddy? What? It is great. It's really great. Can't complain, man. It's uh it's a good one. It's a good Monday. Good. Well, when Monday's good, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's always great to start the week off on a very good note cuz then chances are the rest of your week will probably follow the same way. Hopefully. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself to keep myself sane. Right. Exactly. Um well, one thing that gets everybody's week off to a good start is knowing that on Mondays, you're only one day away from Tuesday, which is IST Tuesday, IS Tuesday, in stocktrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Mm -hmm. Loyalty discounts can add 2% to that. Mm -hmm. Omnibros Live discount every quarter. Right. Over $50 in orders gets you free shipping in the United States. Fabulous packaging and the best customer service ever. That's in stocktrades.com. Yeah, that's right. Just how do they do it? I don't know. Yeah, I really don't either. I mean, their <laughs> prices are insane. And, and you order over $50, is it? Yeah. You get free shipping. It's crazy. Yeah, and it comes bundled up like crazy, the bomb-proof packaging, and I don't even know how they do it. I would love to know their secret one day. Someday we're going to visit there, and Cameron's going to come out like Willy Wonka, like you say. I you can't wait. And we're going to find out the secrets to InStockTrades.com. <laughs> Is it wrong? I, like, if we plan a visit there, I really do want to, like, eBay him the Willy Wonka outfit. <laughs> just, awesome. just go with the bit man please he's just go with the bit yeah really he's awfully shy i don't know if he'd do it yeah, but they're all very sweet people there though yeah That's they true. are <clears throat> but just so how's everything going for you man this is the uh halls previews and reads show i'm gonna be take, filling in the part of the other bald spanish guy gabe <laughs> he will be joining us uh he should be joining us any minute now he's uh, yeah. just taking Things. Why don't we talk about what you read? Have you been reading it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I've read some kind of mango. I've been reading some mango. Uh, I finished the Chimera Ants arc and Hunter. Hunter, beautifully, beautifully well done. Uh, it's known by a lot of fans as one of the best arcs in manga, and it lives up to a type. Uh, the antagonist. Uh, the conclusion with the antagonist, I'm being careful for spoilers because people got real pissy that today. I heard about that. that. Yeah, it was, I thought it was stupid, but, um, <laughs> uh, but in regards to that, it was a beautifully well done arc. It was, it ended beautifully. It it had me almost tearing up. It, it legit hit me in the feels and it, it, it focused on just humanity itself, how, one monster can, when you have this perception of what this monster is, and then eventually it grows and it gains a sense of humanity and it gains a heart and it gains all these complexities. It's it over, I think it started volume 17, I believe. Volume 17 it started, it ends at volume 13. So over 13 volumes, you get just an insane amount of character growth and you start realizing, well, it's one of those stories where you realize, well, maybe humanity are also the monsters as well. So it's it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking brilliant. It's so good. It was way more than what I expected. Wow. You give good reviews, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's highly recommended. Um, if you haven't read Hunter Hunter and you're a mango freak, as Jess likes to put it, uh, it, it's, it starts off as a slow burn and you're going to start it and you're going to think, what is this like kid stuff that I'm reading? It veers off and it goes into very dark places. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. Yeah. So that's, I've been reading that. Uh, I need to start the seven soldiers 
Ooh, yeah. Book for next week because I know that review is coming up. So yeah, it's I'm next gonna, Monday. Yeah, I'm gonna actually crack open that tonight at some point. And yeah, just kind of enjoying that. And you know, Halloween. Halloween started the Halloween movie marathon. Oh yeah, I didn't get a chance to start today. Today was my wife's day off, and so I, I couldn't really show any scary movies in the house. Uh, mostly because she wanted to do stuff with me. So, <laughs> yeah, dang wife. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'll have to start okay. tomorrow. I'm gonna start with it. Very good start. Very. I, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Okay. I love it. And uh, then, I'm, then the next day, I'm going to watch Hereditary. Also very good as well. Yeah, you recommended that, both of those to me. I love Hereditary. It's uh, probably either my – it's in my top two for the year. It's really good. Ooh, that's a pretty big recommendation. I dug the hell out of Hereditary. Um, so I've been doing that. I watched Halloween in 4K the other night with a buddy of mine. He came over, and we sat down and watched it. Still holds up. Halloween holds up very well. I was extremely impressed with how well it held up. It actually is very effective too. Uh, not a bloody movie though. Not not bloody at all. It's it's got a lot of. It's more in it's a masterclass in tension building because mm. it, it, Carpenter is really able to kind of stretch that that string and hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, stretch that bow string, and just hold it to the last minute. And when he lets it go, that tension looses and it, it's effective. It's very effective. Wow, you're making me want to see it. You've never seen the original Halloween? I don't think so, because I always considered it like like a slasher flick, um, okay. and I, that's just not what I'm into. Well, dude, um, we were keeping count. The kill count in the original Halloween, it's only like four people. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's only like four or five people. It's not that much. <laughs> Jake Knapp is asking, is the other movie in your top two, the brilliant film from Shane Black, Predator? No, 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 come on. Like, I loved Predator, don't get me wrong. I loved it in all its excess and in all its stupidity, <laughs> but it's it's not making my top, my top five or my top ten this year. Mm. It's a good movie. <laughs> and Clark Nato is asking if Omar ever left Jess's house or is he locked in a secret room? Yeah, I have Omar here behind these spiders. If I can just reach the door and give him some food and water. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so that that was kind of what kicked off the Halloween Horror Fest. I started a little bit earlier. Uh, tonight I'm watching – I actually had to stop watching it because I didn't know it was two hours long. I thought I'd be able to finish it before uh, we started the show. Hold the Dark. It's on Netflix. Hold the Dark? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I think I know where it's going to go. And if it does go where it's going to go, I'm super excited for it. Um, hmm. I I am really hooked on this right now. It's a, it's a two-hour movie. It's on Netflix. Hold the dark. I've heard mixed things by certain people. Some people liked it. Some people eh, didn't care for it too much. Uh, basically, the general premise is that this kid... It, he's in Alaska, and at the beginning of the movie, the kid is presumably he goes missing and he's killed by wolves. So this mom contacts this writer who has studied wolves. This is set in 2004, and he comes to I think it's Alaska. I'm pretty sure it's Alaska. He comes to Alaska, and he comes there in order to help find out the wolves that killed the kid and to track them down and hunt them along the way a lot of weird and like kind of creepy dark shit starts forming and i'm really digging it so far hmm about halfway through though okay um i don't give as good a book review as you do um <laughs> i read harley ivy harley and ivy meet betty and veronica Ooh, it Am good. <laughs> I'm good. Who's the writer and artist? Uh, writers Paul Dini and Mark and Draco. And I flaked and didn't take this because Mark and Draco didn't have a line at Baltimore. Con. Oh man! And I should have had this signed. The artist is somebody I really like, Laura Braga. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, really like the art. She's done. 
other stuff that I just can't remember. Maybe maybe some other Harley stories or something, because I'm familiar with her art and it's really good. I, I have a feeling she may have done some Harley stories because I like this kind of cartoony, really pretty art though. It's um, kind of realistic, cartoony a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's a it's an old trope where, but it works. Betty and Veronica switch. I uh, bodies with Harley and Ivy and they each have to live their lives. Oh. And so it's kind of fun and you get Riverdale involved and Archie and Jughead and Moose and like that. And Sabrina, there's an appearance from Sabrina, the teenage witch and Zatanna who end up helping to switch the bodies of them accidentally. And there's gangsters out for Harley and Ivy and I don't know, Josie and the Pussycats are in it. I, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It's a Paul Dini book, so you know it's not going to be bad. Oh, yeah. The writing is at least going to be sharp on it. Yeah. Um, and then I read and enjoyed... I already did a video on all this. Rogue and Gambit. This was good. This is good because you don't need to know anything about Rogue and Gambit to get into this book. Mm. They give, like, a recap. that They're on and off and on and off lovers. Um, and it, it gives a little recap at the beginning of it. And it's by Kelly Thompson, so it's really good. I like Kelly Thompson. Um, they sum up what the problems are with their relationship very nicely. So you can go into this cold and enjoy it, which I did. I uh, read it on the recommendation of Faria, and it's um, the Rogan Gambit go undercover to um, uh, like a club med for – club med with therapy for mutants and mutants are missing and so they could go in undercover as a as a troubled couple to try and find out what's going on with these missing mutants and it was good i liked it gambit is is one of those characters where everybody loves him or everybody who grew up in the 90s thinks he's like really cool but i don't think he's ever had really a defining run right yeah i, I know very little about gambit yeah. Uh, I know only a little bit more about Rogue, and but it didn't it didn't hurt that I didn't um, know that much about either one of them um, in this book. I mean, you yeah. can pick it up cold, and it's really good. To my knowledge, he really hasn't had anything like, oh man, that, that Gambit story was incredible, or anything like that. Uh, Rick oh. Nelson asks if we've read The Bridge by Tomasi. That's one of the things I hauled. Um, I saw that it was on sale for three dollars. It's a twenty-five dollar book. It was on sale for three dollars by what? Peter Tomasi. Holy crap! Yeah, it, was, it was on sale. It's about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. It sounds like I haven't read it yet. That was part of my haul for this um, this week. But it's three bucks on Amazon with with free shipping. So I said, "Well, how bad can it be?" It's by Peter J. Tomasi. It's about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. I like history. So, uh, yeah, Rick Nelson, I did, uh, I got this, but I haven't read it yet. Um, the other book I read was, I believe, started as a Kickstarter, and now it's available directly from the uh, author and illustrators, David Raposa and Daniel Warren, from Acceptable Comics. That's Steve Lickman. I think it's Lickman, unless it's Lichman. I'm not familiar mm -hmm. with Lickman. Leekman? Maybe he's German? Leekman! Leekman? It's very funny. It is about what if um, the Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> type characters came alive and Dracula, what if they were real and what if they had lives and what if they were all bummed out and insecure and trying to get laid and terrible with the girls and... Um, <laughs> it's actually really funny. All these characters, you know, there's a dungeon master who's the guy with the skull there. That's Steve Lickman. And um, I, I found this book to be a hoot. It, it's really well done. This this guy with the eyeball, he's stoned throughout the whole thing. He's just high and all his eyes are always at half <laughs> mast. And um, so I... And there's a ghost cop in it, and there's a really cool vampire that takes over and puts Dracula into a tailspin. This is the cool Dracula. He looks like something out of um, Preacher. Um, cool, cool vampire shows up and starts to influence the gang, and Dracula's pissed about it. And um, it's about 
mostly plotting revenge on getting rid of this really cool vampire that has all this influence on these dungeons and um, dragons characters. It's two oh. books. Um, and I read it, read them all in one sitting. I just kept flipping the pages. They were so good. It was a real good page turner and there's a mummy in it and some bird creature. And I don't know. I don't know the, I, I never played Dungeons and Dragons, but I played enough RPGs to know the, the level up stuff that they're always leveling up and referring to leveling up and mm -hmm. I, I understand enough about rpgs to to have gotten the humor it was very funny i really liked it mm -hmm. that sounds really cool man i like the premise of that it looked like he was he-man too the way he was holding up the sword yeah <laughs> oh and now i'm seeing that the bridge is just a dollar 98 on amazon what amazon uh Amazon with Prime, so that's two dollars for this book. So that's practically free. Everybody order the bridge. It's by Peter J. Tomasi, and it's about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. They're practically they're giving it away. I wonder why. I don't know. Yeah, dollar ninety eight. That's practically free. So Tomasi is a solid writer. Yeah, and um, so, so I haven't read that yet, but maybe that's something I'll tackle this week. He said about the 90 books in his read pile. Um, yeah, so that's what I read this week. I did it, and I read something else, and I can't remember what it is. I did a video on it, and I already filed the book away, which is <clears throat> something I did before Omar came. I had like 90 stacks of books all around. I said, I can't let Omar see my cave like this. I've got to file everything. So I did. Yeah. Once, man, once you once you finish a book and you file it away, it's like it goes into the negative zone. <laughs> right. I'm done with it. Now I'm on to the next thing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I see that uh, I want to give a shout out to the Clark NATO who sold me this black hole for cheap. Spider-Man for the PS4. He got done with it in like two days and then sold it to me for less than it would cost me to buy. So thank you, Clark Nato. I don't know where and when I'm going to get to it, but it was so cheap that I, I couldn't pass it up. Right. Um, so thank you to the Clark Nato for that. Yeah. Was that all you read this week? I think, yeah, I read something else, and I just can't remember what it was. That happens. Did you haul anything, big guy? Oh, my God. Did I haul? Woo, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have the bridge as we've been talking about so promo go on to amazon even though they are not ist for two dollars and get the bridge um this book has been hard to find for me i don't know if it's out of print or what but it's the first black beetle oh. i got this i got this for first for, for uh, half off at the baltimore comic-con dude that's out of print i i don't know if it is it's not on ist and i'm so lazy wow. i was just like well, whenever it comes back on IST, I'll get it. But I saw it for half off, and I thought, ah, I should probably just buy it. I've been I, looking for it. I wish it would come back to that. That's so good. It's really, really good stuff. And it's a shame he hasn't come back to that. Yeah, he wrote and drew it? Francisco Francavilla? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. It's his. It's basically his noir universe. It's his uh, version of kind of like Lobster Johnson. Cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool to me. I know that it really got good. talked up a lot by Colin O'Neill in the admin chat when he was still an admin. And um, so I I wanted to get that. And then from Carl Kessel, who wants to be on the show because he wants to promote his Kickstarter, which is just a postcard now, Impossible Jones. Carl Kessel wants to be on the show. I only know him as the writer of Harley Quinn, which he signed for me. Mm -hmm. But he's done a lot of art on, what, Fantastic Four, too, apparently. Is okay. he the one that did the art for the Mark Wade run? I, I, have not, I, have not, I have not read the Mark Wade run. Let me look here. Is he the one that did that? Is that Carl Kessel or is it somebody else? Yada dee, yada da. No, that was ha huh, my Mike Ringo. Who we oh inks by Carl Kessel. Okay, pencils Mike Ringo, inks Carl Kessel. Okay. Well that was a classic run. That 
Mark Wade fantastic. That's what I should have had Mark Wade sign. <laughs> I had him sign Empire for me, which is a good choice, but yeah. I should have had him sign my Fantastic Four. Um, yoink. Um, so Carl Kessel had a book there for sale with, um, uh, let's see, what's his name now? See, I suck at things. Tom Grummet. So they both signed this book they did together. They're both doing Impossible Jones. They did Section Zero, and it looked really good. And, of course, Carl Kessel was there talking about it, and so was Tom Grummet, and I thought... What the heck? It was $40. I could get them both to sign it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, Section Zero isn't a secret section of the United Nations Charter. Does not perpetually fund a team of experts. Oh, okay. Does not a team of experts in exploring the investigative the fantastic and the unknown. The idea that this team looks into things such as UFOs, monsters, lost civilizations, time travel, ancient gods, and still living dinosaurs is nothing but a myth. After all, none of these things exist. Ooh, this that's why I bought it. He mm. described it to me. And I was like, okay, I want to do it. That's an interesting description. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, and Tom Grummet does the art. Now I know he's done a bunch of stuff for Marvel, so but I don't have anyone here like Omar to tell me what X-Men issues he did in the 90s, like 301 to 333 when what panels he did so <laughs> i'm pretty sure omar could tell you just about anything at the oh yeah and then we ran into ron mars and got this really big nice book beast of the black hand which Ooh. ron mars wrote and he that looks totally, like something out of hellboy yeah it does um it's got big beautiful art in it whoop ron mars wrote it ron mars wrote it with art by i'll get to who the artist is created by sculptor paul harding oh he um ron mars referred to a bunch of sculptures that he had uh, oh. uh statues and the sculptor paul harding came up with a concept and it's brought to life by ron mars artist matthew dow smith and colorist niraj manan it's really pretty and it is. It's really yeah. cool. Epic tale of espionage, dark magic, and monsters. As British secret agent Oswald Rayner faces the secret cabal known as the Black Hand. Is that Ooh, the monk it, John Wick? It's got <laughs> all these bookmarks that I stashed in it are falling out. It features Rasputin in it. Oh, that's Rasputin. Beginning with the assassination of the mad monk Rasputin, Rainer and his allies fight to stem a supernatural tide poised to engulf the world. Uh, yeah, that sounds like it's made for me. That sounds really good. Yeah. So that sounds very good. It wasn't expensive, and I got Ron Mars' signature in it, so that was cool. He even said wow. best wishes, so we're like practically married now. I am down with that. That sounds really good. If you ever want to read a, a solid uh, historical fiction, nonfiction comic, uh, read Petrograd. It details the assassination of Rasputin. It was fucking phenomenal. Oh, really? Really okay. good. I love it. I love Petrograd. If you're a history junkie, you really should check that, that one out. Okay, I am a history junkie. You will definitely like Petrograd, then. Uh, let's see. I also got on um, the recommendation of Travis in the Omnibros group, The Rattler. Uh, ten years have passed. It's originally started as a Kickstarter, I think, but now it's on Image. Oh, ten years have passed since Stephen Thorne's fiance vanished without a trace, and he has grown into a prominent, if bitter, victim's rights crusader. Despite the cold trail and lack of leads, he stubbornly refuses to give up the search. And then he begins to hear her voice in the strangest of places. Hmm. That sounds good. He recommended it to me, and I like that the only color on these pages is blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's black and white and bloody. Uh, let's see. And then Jeff Lemire, Royal City, one and two. Uh, 
Let's okay. see. Everybody in the chat last Monday was recommending Skyward. So I got that. Gravity apparently is failing in on the world and people are floating. So that sounded enough to me to be interesting how there's it's low gravity. And I guess you get tied down so you stay on the earth. I would yeah. actually kind of love that. I would love that. I'd kind of love that. <laughs> if there was no gravity? That'd be fun. Well, no, we probably we'd be dead, but still it'd be fun. <laughs> Yeah, all our insides would probably start going Ooh. goofy. Descender, yeah. volume 99. What is this? Volume 6, Descender. I think this might be the last Descender, the climactic chapter. Okay. And then I think it turns into Ascender. <laughs> no, I think it does. I think he's got a new one coming out next year called Ascender. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is the sequel to that. Oh, cool. Dr. Afra, oversized hardcover. Because I love Dr. Afra. Oh. And then I got a couple of more. I got a Battle World book and a War Zones book. So that I'm going to add to the pile. Eight War Zones 1872 and then Battle World Siege. These were both recommended to me huh. by a certain Riley Moore. They were recommendations. And you've been on a battle world kick lately. I'm going to read them all and then write down what I think of them and then do a vid on them. Yeah. Good idea. Um, let's see. Port of Earth 2. I haven't started Volume 1 yet, but I know that I like it because it sounds awesome. We have made a deal to host an alien spaceport on Earth, but who does port security really protect? Humans or Aliens. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so this sounds good to me. It sounds interesting. Um, selected for, oh, I wanted to read this. Infidel. I wanted to read this for um, my October reads. A horror tale for the 21st century. Infidel follows... An American Muslim woman and her multiracial neighbors who move into a building haunted by entities fueled by xenophobia. Huh. That sounds interesting. Yeah. I read good things about this. It's considered a really good horror book. And Are it's haunted. Staying? So Are they staying in the White House? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> that one was for you, Clark. That was funny. Holy fuck. There's hey, Gabe Infinity Watch. Hey. What's up, guys? We're okay. just going through what I hauled. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. What'd you haul? Um, I still got, uh, let's see, I got the Exiles Complete Collection, which I think they used to be hard to find, and they got wiped out in the flood. The Exiles is supposed to be mutant awesomeness, so I can dig that. I wasn't this mutants. recently reprinted? I'm sorry, wasn't this recently reprinted? Yeah, that's what this is. The complete collection, 1 through 19. And Yeah, uh, I'm very tempted to uh, check this series out. I didn't really, I kind of, like, I can't really think of a word right now. I'm sorry, my vocabulary is getting a little lame today. Uh, but I kind of just ignored that book when it first came out. But I, in the last, like, 20, 25 years, however long it's been since that series, I've heard nothing but beautiful things about that Judd Winnick storyline. So Yeah, it's supposed to be great. And all my issues that I carefully collected got wiped out in the flood. So I'm happy to see that reprinted. Excellent. Yeah, I'm happy for you too with that. Because I know that flood sucks. I'm glad that you're still able to make uh, recoveries on it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Flash Rebirth number three seems to be the only Rebirth book I'm actually keeping up with for some reason. Oh. Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the all-time thinnest omnibi. <laughs> you even call that an omnibi? I don't know. <laughs> it's very thin, but it's supposed to be a great run. Uh, it's it wasn't very expensive. It's a seventy-five dollar cover, and I think I got it half off at IST. Uh, this looks like it's more uh, film by Jerry Duggan. It looks like it's more related to the film. And then I got Infinity Countdown. This is supposed to lead directly into Infinity Countdown. So I got those two. Uh, I'm sorry, just give me a sec. Uh, does the Infinity Countdown trade, does that have uh, Infinity Countdown 
Adam Warlock, I think it's called. It has Infinity Countdown Prime number one, Infinity Countdown one through five, Infinity Countdown Adam Warlock, and material from Free Comic Book Day, Amazing Spider-Man slash Guardians of the Galaxy one. Cool. Okay. I hope that I hope they put uh, Adam Warlock at the beginning of that book of that collection. Uh, okay. Uh, if you open it up, is it Mike Allred art? Yes, like the first it's book. Him fa facing Kang. Okay, so yeah, that's the uh, that's perfect. That leads that Jerry Duggan omnibus leads and, and ends directly where that picks up afterwards. So that's in perfect order so far. It sounds like because that uh, Adam Warlock book was supposed to be the, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy like one hundred and fifty something like that. They canceled it, canceled the series, of course, and continued it on as Infinity Countdown. Ah, if that okay. makes sense, yeah, at all to anybody. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't like in, in comic book nerd terms, like we're used to it, so that does yeah. make sense. But in the practical <laughs> aspect of life, that doesn't make sense. Actually, it's issue one fifty four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. Either way, yeah, there was supposed to be a big milestone issue there you that go. was supposed to be that Adam Warlock book, and they they. They basically just retitled it as a Fanny Countdown Adam Warlock. Mm, okay. But uh, Mike Allred, uh, excuse me, Mike Allred art. You can't go wrong with that, dude. That shit's great. That's some of the best, coolest artwork you're gonna see. Mike is yeah. great. I love this. You don't expect him to do that kind of shit. I mean, it, it, I, I guess it makes sense now after Silver Surfer. But normally, like Mike Allred was always to me uh, kind of. Pigeonholed, typecasted into that like underground, like sweetheart kind of phase. I love Mike's work. Silver Surfer, I do too. Statics, it's all good. Dude, that 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 Surfer on the bus is going to be an automatic day one. I'm gonna pull it out of the box at the store and set it aside. It's immediately going. It's going to be an immediate buy. 100%. Wow, this looks really good. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. It looks awesome. But I heard really it while you were talking. Sorry. <laughs> <You're>, uh, <laughs> I, I heard somebody once ask about not on the chat. It might have been in yeah. real life. I don't remember. It's all kind of the same thing these days. Uh, casting for Adam Warlock. Matthew McConaughey. Uh, dude, I, I had a better idea, but it's it's a <laughs> dead person. <laughs> uh, what's his fuck? Uh, Paul Walker. Paul Walker would have been amazing. Oh, yeah. like, been look at that guy. Look at him mm. and Adam Warlock. Excellent. But Gabe, are you allowed to take pictures at your job for the omnibuses, or what are you getting? For? <laughs> I don't know. I have to. I have to ask that Jonathan Winters motherfucker if it's okay. <laughs> and I don't mean. I don't. And I don't mean the classic comedian. I mean some other guy. I didn't know who the classic co comedian was. You don't know who Jonathan Winters is. No, oh, I do. You? Yeah, I'm oh, impressed okay. that you do. <laughs> I know my stuff. Yeah, you do. Let me ask you guys this real quick. This is just a question I wanted to throw out, and this can go out to the chat, too. Uh, Three Stooges. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you more of a shemp or a curly person? Is that even a question? That's a, that's not a question. Shemp right. doesn't like exist in my universe. It's curly. Come on. Curly all the way. Shemp was, well, Shemp was okay, but even as a kid, like when when it was the Shemp episodes, I would just I wouldn't watch it. Yeah, me either. Shemp was before uh, Curly. That's what's really weird about it. Curly was a replacement. Yeah. And uh, there's a term out there called a uh, fake Shemp that's used in like movies and TVs and stuff like that. For you know, what? That means at all. It's for when. So, oh God, how do I describe it? Right, uh, is this another Penn Island that you're gonna jam me up on? <laughs> no, it's not Penn Island. This is a, it's a real, real thing. It's when uh, you, because they used to do that a lot in uh, the Shemp episode. I think after he died or or whatever, that they would use like a body stand-in as as Shemp, mm. like from the back or like a hand or uh -huh. you know something like that. That's called fake sh uh, uh, fake Shemp. Uh, Mel Brooks, no, I'm sorry, Mel Gibson used it in uh, Passion of the Christ, where it was like his hand, like putting in the spike in Jesus' oh, hand, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I, basically that whole thing with the speaking of Paul Walker again, it's come kind of full circle. The whole Paul Walker thing in the last 
uh, Fast and Furious movie, it basically is all fake sh- fake shimp because they use his brother as a stand-in. Oh, they, interesting. Ooh. Yeah, they did a good job with that, though. The uh, CGI was really solid. Uh, too bad the movie wasn't and practically I, better. I love I love all the Fast and Furious movies. Dude, I, dude, they're a guilty pleasure. They're like you know one of those movies that I can watch any time at any part. I could just you know I don't I don't flip through channels anymore like like we like we used yeah. to back in my day. But if I ever just like you know TBS and it came on, I would just watch it fifteen minutes in, twenty minutes in, an hour in. Who cares? <laughs> Yeah. All right, so let's keep going. I totally took this thing off track. With this no, thing. it's fine. I, I like tangents. Tangents are good. All right. Just the, last, the last book I got was the, the New Adventures of Santa Claus, Claus Volume 2, or The New Adventures of Santa Claus. It's the follow-up, Grant Morrison's follow-up to Claus. So it looks mighty bitchin'. That's a really cool picture of some kind of major fight with wolves and dire wolves or something. I don't know. It looks a, a frost giants or something. This looks great. Ooh, Geppetto's in it too. Okay. I'm going to read this soon. Not for October though. I'm going to read this in December. Um, so that's what I hauled. We've covered what we've read. How about you, Gabe? What have you hauled and readed? Uh, give me a second. I'm just refining back to Clark Nato. Uh, so let me see. Uh, I, I showed some of this stuff off yesterday on the Sunday show, which man, that Sunday show was taken off. That's a that was a great move on our part to go to Sundays. Uh, we had like 60 plus people on a Sunday morning hanging out with us. Lazy Sunday kind of show. Lazy Sunday. Lazy Sunday uh, with the uh, hardcover whores. <laughs> So this Saturday that just passed at Torpedo, we had uh, the ever-elusive Sam Keith. We got him to do a signing in the store along with Jay Lee uh, because I wish I had the book here because there's a Batman Max series that's coming out. It actually comes out this Wednesday. But we had at Torpedo an exclusive cover done by Jay Lee. So we had Jay Lee, we had Sam Keith there signing copies of the book and, and stuff like that. It's weird because that Max Batman was supposed to come out last Wednesday, right? And we got a shipment in of all of our exclusive covers that we did. Because we have the Jay Lee cover is a, we have a colored cover, we have the ink version, and a pencil version. So it's like those three variants kind of thing. So we got all those covers in and everything like that. And then IDW <laughs> delayed the release of the main Batman Max until this week, like a week later. Wow. So the whole thing where we couldn't sell it early, we couldn't really show it off too much until the signing was happening. Either way. Uh, so with that said, uh, one of my favorite all-time books was, is this Marvel's Wolverine Blood Hungry. Uh, this is a little tiny trade paperback that's about four issues thick that reprints a lot of great material from uh, Marvel Comics Presents with Sam Keith, who, if you don't know, is the creator of the Max. But before that, he was doing this crazy, outrageous artwork for Marvel. Uh, this is a great Wolverine story. So I got this signed. A little bit of a story I, sh- I-, I shared on Sunday. He drew, he recolored the cover of this book because originally this cover, if anybody has it, the nose is purple. It's all purple. And Sam Keith had the original art on display at the signing, which is beautiful. And I wanted it, but it's it was literally the price of a car. Uh, but he said that he hates the coloring in his book. He hates the coloring done on this cover. And I go, hey, man, why don't you just recolor it for me then as a joke? You know, oh, that's a great idea. So this has all been re, re-sharpied in here by, by Sam Keith. So I guess I could consider that like a fun little remark. That's cool. Uh, fuck, I left my Max. Well, I have the first Max maximized hardcover that reprints like four issues of the Max. I got that signed. I've been reading that. Uh, that series is fantastic. Uh, I don't know what else to really say other than the fact that Sam Keith is a goddamn genius. That man's art and his storytelling and his craziness is just really unparalleled. Like He is definitely a unique individual. So with that, was it, was it uh, I didn't show... Yeah, he's great. 
I didn't show you guys these wizard magazines. <laughs> oh gosh. So Jay Lee, like I said, was at the show or was at the signing. I had him autograph this cover of Wizard magazine for me because this is his artwork for uh, uh, Blood Strike or Young Blood, Young Blood Strike Files. And then I also he did, 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 with these Wizard magazines. One of the cool things about it is you get a fold-out poster of the cover, and that's been autographed as well by Jay Lee. So I had him autograph the cover, the inside poster which I may one day just pull out and reframe, or not reframe, but frame up. Uh, there's something in here, give me a second. There's something that's really interesting and cool that I want to share with you guys. Because one of the conversations I had with Sam Keith, because he signed, again, Wizard Magazines, he signed this Max uh, Wizard Magazine for me, and a poster inside of it as well. And then I have another really great Max cover from Wizard that he signed for me also. So we were talking, and he he's a great guy. You bring up a book, and he would tell you the entire history and story of why he uh, did certain things in that book. You get an entire oral history from the man himself about his creative process doing this stuff. So he was saying that when he was doing these covers for Wizard, uh, they they didn't like that he his price. Like his price for doing a cover was more than they wanted to pay. So they told him, well, hey, you know, do the cover and we'll make you one of our hot artists because Wizard in these magazines had a top 10 hottest artists. Huh. So they said, we'll make you, we'll put you on that list if you do the cover for us, essentially telling him that we will promote you and boost your your profile up in this Wizard magazine by being a top artist. He's like, I don't even know what that means. How can I be a hot art artist? I've been around for over 10 years, <laughs> right? So in this one, the Jay Lee one, on the top 10 artist lists, I don't know if you can see this, sorry for like any kind of like shadows and stuff. Uh, first up is Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, of course, Rob Liefeld, because again, this is 1993. <laughs> wow. Uh, Dale Keown. This was post the Levi's commercial. Uh, my, no, this is probably after the Levi's commercial. Levi's commercial has been he was doing X Force. Oh, okay. Uh, number four is Dale Keown. Number five is Sam Keith. So here's Sam Keith here. That must uh, I'll skip over because number seven on his list is Jay Lee. So about 25 years ago, this Wizard magazine came out that had Sam Keith and Jay Lee on the top 10 artist list. And 25 <laughs> years later, they're in our in the store doing a signing. So I just thought that was kind of cool. Sorry. That was, I, if that was anticlimactic or you thought it was going to be a better ending, sorry. <laughs> but I thought that was fucking cool. Well, that's pretty cool, man. Pretty I thought awesome. for sure it was going to be a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's between you and Omar. <laughs> None of that happened. Um. So that's that. I also got a... Uh, I finally found myself a multiple man yesterday at Target. Cool. I love I love the idea of them doing multiple man. He's one of my favorite X Men, next to Maggot. <laughs> uh, I probably want, I'm going to get like three or four of these if I can, if I could find them. Uh, if anybody's looking for a fucking apocalypse leg, let me know. I don't want that fucking apocalypse leg. I'm not going to get any other figure from this line <laughs> besides this one probably. So if anybody needs an apocalypse leg. Holla at your boy. Hit me up. Game Infinity Watch on uh, Instagram. I'll, I'll just send you an Apocalypse League. But yeah. That's uh, that's my hauls. I've been reading Max. Sorry, I don't have it with me. I left it in the I think I left it in the, the living room. Uh, and I got a, I got an attorney today, so that's something I hauled. And <laughs> So shout out to Nick, any help that they provided. And that'll probably be the last I speak about that uh, in this forum. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, there you go. I'll, uh, and I got like I got like four beers. It's been one of those days. So um, let's see what oh. happens. In the next. I'm going to hammer these things and get drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Israel Gaten just finished Bouncer, and he said it was a great recommendation. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um and have I read Inkle or Meta Barons? I read the Inkle and I loved it. I have not read Meta Barons, but I loved the Inkle. 
Um, so, uh, wait, did you say something about an attorney? <laughs> yeah, I did. Huh, okay. He's well, suing we, Mark Wade, too. You're suing Mark Wade, too. Yeah, I'm suing Mark Wade, yeah. <laughs> uh, Psycho Cleveland, he's asking, how is Sam Keith's demeanor? Uh, if you, you want, take a look on the page. There's some, some pictures. I don't like to talk about people's looks. That's totally inappropriate and mean, but he does not. The artwork that you see for Max Keith related, because again, he's a very uh, elusive appearances. So it's really hard to kind of, I never really knew what he looked like, but I had an image in my mind of what that artwork comes out of like what kind of person makes that kind of artwork mm -hmm. and he is absolutely nothing nothing at all like that uh he is very meek hmm. extremely pleasant ex extremely he gave the manager of our store uh a double page spread Or somebody else. The fact that we were sissy doesn't really get out and get too much interaction with people. You broke up but, a little bit there. He gave your manager what now? Uh, a double page spread, a double page piece of original art from Zero Girl. Uh, I'm sorry, my notifications are getting annoying. Let me turn these off. So he gave uh, uh, the other manager an amazing, uh, psychotic. Larry Sam Keith and um, another works of this his name's he's the guy that you guys saw you're breaking up something true. Batman playing. yeah you, you may want to re-sign in you're breaking up okay, really bad it. yeah sign back in because we're missing half of what you're saying <laughs> I've always been wanted to spin that wheel. You remember that? The giant wheel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good sound effect. Who is it? Drew Carey is the one that hosts that now? I think so, yeah. You still got the little mic, too. The little one with the... Right. <laughs> that little teeny mic. <laughs> I was always a Jeopardy kind of guy. Man, Jeopardy is hard now. Yeah, it is. Alex Trebek is still there, dude. He's been there for like 30 years at this point. He's been there forever. He still hosts it. Yeah, I and I, I used to crush Jeopardy when I was like in my 20s and 30s. Yeah. And I just I just watched it the other day, and I'm like, I what? How would anybody even know the answer to this? What the, or the question to this answer? I've just... Man, it has gotten really hard. Maybe it's because it's the rise of the internet, so people are more readily accessible to information that they're just like, oh, we got to crank it up to 11 now and give them ridiculously challenging questions. I blame that Ken Jennings guy that won for like three years straight or whatever. <laughs> he, yeah, what, what was his record? I, I don't know. Something crazy. He was he won for a bunch of straight times, and I think they said, we've got to make this harder. <laughs> they, went, they went to town to make it harder. I yeah. just... I couldn't even, I just felt bad about myself after I was watching it because I used to get really awesome scores at it. Mm -hmm. It was really fast. I'm not saying I could go on television and do that because that's a whole new level of nervousness when you go on TV and you've got to come up with the questions to those answers. But man, just sitting in my living room, I was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it, like, makes you, it makes you feel completely inferior as these people just like bell out answers and they get them right. I know. <laughs> yeah, I was not doing too well. Well, when Gabe gets on, we'll we'll just talk about previews because there's a lot coming out this week. Uh, and, uh, the next edition book two that comes out this week. Next week, Ricky C is saying. Oh we'll man, that was... listening to yellow cover. I, I am all cut up with de caught up with deadly class, and I'm telling you guys, Randy, you guys are in for a hell of a fun ride. Oh, good. I oh, read the first man. book and I've forgotten it all, so I need to go back once volume two comes out and read it all again. The second book is even better. Really? It's even better. Remender introduces a new class of kids, 
and you think, oh, kind of, it kind of sucks. You know, he's introducing a new class of kids. Spoilers, I guess. I have to say that now. Um, he introduces <laughs> he introduces a new class of kids, and they are awesome. They are fantastic. They are all badass. They're all really cool. They're all really like interesting characters that he brings to the to the series. It's great. It's great stuff. I I loved it more than the first uh, first twenty issues. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, it's you're in for a treat, Jess. Good. Okay. That sounds well, good because I loved the first book. Yeah, but like with all things Remender, you're also in for like a bit of an emotional roller coaster. No. Oh. Okay. Um. I think I have a Remender book that I haven't read. I can't I can't squint my eyes enough to see. Did he write the End League? Is that a Remender book? Uh, I don't think so. Who wrote that? Yeah, Remender wrote the End League, and that was from Dark Horse, and I haven't read that. That's a Remender, one of the few Remender books I haven't read. It's a giant book, and I don't know what it's about. End League is Remender, yeah. Yeah. I thought so. That means I have a Remender book that I need to read. Yeah. I read everything he pretty much puts out. Uh, he's got that new book out um, with the chick in the car, and I can't remember the name of it. Somebody in the chat will tell me. I still have to read that. I have to catch up with Seven to Eternity. I haven't read that. Jerome, oh. Pena, Jerome Pena is the artist on it, and it is gorgeous. Hmm. And I've got to catch up on Black Science. That's ending soon. Uh, and speaking of somebody else, I think Brubaker wrote Kill or Be Killed. Are we waiting for a hardcover on that? That's finished. Uh, I don't know. I mean, everything is finished. It's finished. Everything okay. Brubaker, everything Brubaker writes gets a hardcover. Okay. I'll wait then. Yeah, it, it ended well. It's a very strong ending, Jess. It's uh, not, not my favorite of his series, but it ends very strongly. I still think Fatal is my favorite Brubaker book. It is awesome. Just because I'm a sucker for that oh, Lovecraftian horror. Yeah, me too. That's something I could read in October. And is he back? We I'm back. Him? Is he back? Is this huh? better? Huh? At all? Really? Um, I think so. Yeah, you're still a little choppy, but we can hear you. Fuck. Uh, all right. We can hear you fine. That's the important thing. Well, you gotta you gotta see me too. I am the face of this of this channel. Uh, we can see you. Okay. Here's the, here's the money maker right here, everybody. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Well, anyway, so that gave me time for whatever reason. Some idiots, some idiots, uh, put the uh, the router in my house on the on the plug that has that's attached to a switch. Hmm. So what happened is somebody flipped that switch and my router got turned off. Oh no wonder you were choppy. Well, you know, so, but that gave me time to, at all. <laughs> I know. So that gave me some time to go reset everything. Uh, I did go back and get the Max hardcover I was talking about. Uh, here's a little autograph from Doodle. No, not on that page. Uh, this page here, signed by Max Keith. He did a little cute little Doodle on there for me. And uh, this series is fantastic. It's really. If you haven't read it before, it's really hard to kind of describe. The art in this is fantastic, though. Uh, it's just it has this really weird storytelling where the main character, the Max, pops in and out of realities in like oh. different dimensions and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's great. It, I like his art style. I enjoy the way Sam Keith draws women because they're not all like super fit and overly sexified. Or you know, they have little guts and bellies on them and. And they're not, you know, the most beautiful things in the world or, like, this ideally sexualized version of women. But it's great. So there's that. Uh, I got new shoes. I got – this is going to turn into sneaker burrows because I got new shoes today. Uh, yeah, but there you go. Continue. Sorry. I'm going to have another beer. Uh, shout out to Chase Chu in the chat who I met at Baltimore and he brought me a root beer that I had never had before. It was from Australia. It was really good. Thank you, Chase Chu. Was there any roofies in it? 
Uh, no, it was uh, untampered with. I I drank it on the spot. I was so thirsty. It was warm, and I said, I don't care, and I just drank it right there at the con. He came through in the clutch. I was almost going to go get a Diet Coke. I was so thirsty. I'm really yeah, I'm dying right now. Um, does anybody know anything? Chase Chew's asking about the Hellstorm Omnibus by Ellis that comes out this week. Does it, do you know about that, either of you? Not at all. I want to pick it up uh, just because it's Warren Ellis. And it's interesting. It's an interesting omnibus because it's like one of those weird story, weird like, where the fuck did this come from? How come you guys made this omnibus where you haven't made like other more well known storylines in omnibus or reprinted, you know, like Annihilation or something? Um, but it's like 75 bucks after discount. So it's a little bit of a, Ooh. a little pricey for. Wow. Like a, basically almost a blind buy. After mm. discount? After this kind, I think it's seventy-five bucks still. Damn. Yeah. Mm. Oh, speaking of, let me just pull up the previews and stuff for this week. <laughs> Nays Grace says, "I love the Max and Max versus Pit too." I remember that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was saying earlier. Uh, Sam Keith gave the uh, manager a double-page spread from Zero Girls. Absolutely gorgeous and beautiful um, artwork. Original comic book artwork is destroyed in a printing process. Like the final product that you see in these books is is nothing com compared to the actual work and uh, art that goes into the creation of it. So you got that. The little Max uh, sketch went to another employee of ours, basically because, like I guess the Semke doesn't get out. He's a homebody. He says the only time he leaves his house is to go across the street to get his mail, that kind of thing. But we treated him so well, and we were also very nice and friendly to him and just made that kind of impression on him that he's just a super humble guy, very generous, like I said, with the artwork and stuff like that. He gave, he gave it to, to the other guys. Uh, he's very quiet when he speaks. He speaks very low, very level. Like, there's really no uh, ups or downs with the way he speaks. It's all very level. Even when he kind of cusses and says – Thing, it talks about things he doesn't like. It's still this very, you know, <laughs> level approach to his speech. Um, very meek, very just, you know, he's kind of got to tuck his T-shirts into his shorts. Uh, but that's basically the sign of a genius. I mean, that guy is, <laughs> that guy is incredible. Hmm. Well, we can see if we bring up the previews now, we can see exactly what Hellstorm costs. Yeah. So are you um, going to do the previews? And I'll, yeah. I'll pull up. I can look on the IST thing right now. Hellstorm. Hellstorm is $75 cover price, and it's going to be 50% oh. off. Oh, okay. I read that backwards. That's better. That's better. So it's going to be like 35 bucks or something, so I'm in. In that ballpark, yeah. Yeah. But plus tax. Everybody has to pay tax out there in a world, first world problems. Not in Virginia. Well, I, I I buy it through the store. Yes, I do support my own store, no matter what that <laughs> forum says. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I do pay. You know, so you know, I pay tax on it too. Whatever. Um, but for yeah, I'm sorry, I uh, I was wrong again. That's but right. I will. Uh, I think for that much money, I don't. I think it's worth checking out just based on my appreciation for Warren Ellis. Especially that time frame. This is unknown early Warren Ellis. That might have been be before, maybe after Doctor Do or Doom two thousand ninety nine. Wow, but it was like really early, early uh, Warren Ellis stuff. So, Man. wait, um, don't you're skipping over some stuff? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't. I didn't know I was on. I forgot. Uh, uh, all right. There's Eternal Empire too. I know. I want to get that because I read one a couple weeks ago. Yeah, all these books here. Um, I, I haven't read them, but from the store, uh, then the people I talk to at the store, because if you run a store, you, you have to talk to your people, see what they like, what they're digging, what they're not digging, because ordering comics for a store is impossible to get right. It's very, very hard. Stores live and die off of these orders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Analog, I remember that we've had a lot of pull customers for Analog, um, a lot of pull customers for Grave Diggers Union. 
Manifest Destiny, not so much now, but I know that that used to be a really big book at one point. I used Probably to because that, at yeah. one point it, it it was the 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 rights for it were bought by movie companies or something like that. Hmm. Um, I have no idea about me, the people. I'm guessing this is some kind of Donald Trump book. It looks like. <laughs> Is that right? It looks like it, so I don't care. I I, I rather not get involved in those types of stories. Oh, but yeah, I there you, you go. Were kidding, you're right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Wicked and Divine, which I've never read, but I think Jess is in love with it. Oh. Uh, I do like it, yeah, but I haven't read anything past the second book. Pia Guerrero is doing uh, We the People. He was the artist for Why the Last Man. Yeah. I don't know. Wicked and Divine, that's a pass. <laughs> Thought it was boring. I read the first few. I read the first few arcs, and then I couldn't get into it. I'm sorry, Jess. It's a phonogram that you like so much, right? Right. It's phonogram that I struggled with. Yeah. Uh, Dark Horse. Uh, we got. I don't know anything here. None of this. Oh, uh, uh, Harrow County. County. Yeah. I need isn't to get that. Like a, isn't that getting a library edition sometime soon? I thought. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm waiting for that. I'm gonna pick that up just based on. This is a good book for Halloween reading or for scary book reading, which we'll talk about on Thursday. That's Thursday's topic, right? Mm -hmm. Is going to be uh, uh, creepy, scary stories to read for the mm -hmm. Halloween season. Spooky stories. Spooky stories. <laughs> It sounded like the count right there. You're like, one spooky story. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, so there's Likely Stories, hardcover by Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham. Ooh. Uh, Mark Buckingham is uh, somebody that uh, Jess and Omar approached at Baltimore Con. Uh, yeah, Omar approached him. I think Mark might be a guest on the show. That Excellent. sounds good. Those are two good talents right there. I don't know. I never heard of it. That kind of creative team. Holy shit. Uh, Plant vs. Zombies. I, I like the video game a lot, but I I, I, I I could care less about reading stories on the, that video game world. Uh, and Troll Hunters, whatever that is. Moving on. IDW. They got one thing coming out this week called Wrath. Moving on. So, all right. Here, this is a crazy, kind of a crazy week for our community when it comes down to omnibus collectors, hardcover collectors, uh, stuff like that. So starting with DC, I know just, uh, let's just talk about Batman, uh, night quest. I just, I just want to point out how fucking cool this cover is. That's all. Look how badass that cover is. <laughs> My favorite part is, uh, this, this, uh, Batman camel toe we got going on here at the bottom. <laughs> So two weeks ago we we got bat dick. Now we get bat camel toe. Yep, bat camel toe. Uh, maybe this will get a uh, become controversial and become very popular. <laughs> uh, Batman White Knight. Okay, I've I spent a lot of time avoiding this book because yeah, I was waiting too. to read it all in a big collection like this. I mean, this isn't mm -hmm. a big collection, but. This is, I'm going to 100% day one, uh, I might not buy it, because I think I'm going to buy a hardcover if I like it, but I will borrow this from the store, read it, and check it out. I'm very interested in this alternate take on Batman and the Joker, written and drawn by uh, Sean Murphy, I, Sean Gordon Murphy. Yes, I dug it. Yeah. I dug this. Uh, uh... I, I thought it was one of the more recent Batman stories that I really enjoyed the hell out of. He really paints a picture where you start realizing Batman really is an asshole. And <laughs> that was more of that idea over, I think it's like 12 issues, uh, 8 issues. I forgot how much it is. But it's it's really good. It, it, and he makes the Joker likable. And he turns the story around on its head. It's a very good story. He just announced he's doing a sequel to this, I think, next year. And I'm excited to read it. It's uh, eight issues, and it's funny that it's under the DC Black Label imprint, even though it was originally the singles were released in just normal DC print, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, yeah. so apparently this is the story of Joker is the good guy, and he's convincing the world that, or at least Gotham City, that Batman is a, is a dick, and that he is circumcised. 
I may not be able to wait for a hardcover of this. I may just have to get the trade. It's, Dude, it's I, I, I would buy it too, but I uh, I have I have access you guys don't, so I can actually right. just borrow it and check it out. Uh, unlike anything you've ever seen before by Nerdist, one day we'll, we'll have, holy fucking shit, this is the greatest thing ever, balls, 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 uh, signed Omni Bros Life <laughs> on a comic book. I swear, that will happen. That's a goal. <laughs> um, Green Lanterns, uh, Volume 7, Superhuman Trafficking. Yeah. They're going to reprint, Jerry... Astounding. They're gonna reprint Astounding Wolfman. It's just going to have a meh from Jess Bragg. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna have uh, it's gonna have a picture of uh, what is that shitty root beer barks or whatever that just uses. <laughs> that it's, gonna gonna just have, it's gonna just have a picture of root beer and it's gonna say Omni Dog next to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, speaking of things that uh, just does like, uh, here is the Amanda Connor, Jimmy Palmiotti, Harley Quinn Omnibus Volume Two. That will be fifty percent off. Good stuff. Oh, just what's a uh, what's the discount for uh, uh, White Knight? White Knight. Okay, just a sec. Oh wait, Batman White Knight. Forty two percent. Not bad. Down to eleven fifty nine. That's, That's nothing. Yeah. Price. That's nothing. <laughs> I love the dart in Batman. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for that. So this is Harley Quinn 17 through 30, Harley Quinn Road Trip Special. That's the that's the one with Poison Ivy, right? Mm-hmm. Are you on a road trip? Uh, Harley Quinn, be careful what you wish for. Harley Quinn and her gang of Harleys, one through six, and Harley Quinn's little black book, which apparently isn't the grown. Best. Yeah, but everything else is great. This is. No, this isn't Rebirth, right? This is the end of the new 52, Harley Quinn? Correct. So you got some top talent in here. Not only, you know, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, uh, Chad Harden. You got Joseph Michael Linzer, Neil Adams, Simon Bisley. So those are some, uh, some top talent right there on that book. All right, what else we got going on? Justice League, the Dark Side War Essential Edition trade paperback. Um, I'd rather just buy it. Mm-hmm. Here's something cool. Swamp Thing, the Bronze Age on the bus volume one. So this is the beginning of uh, Lane Wayne's run <laughs> on Swamp Thing with Bernie Wrightson. <laughs> Lane Wayne and Bernie Wrightson, yep. Rejitson. Reg- yeah. Right before uh, <laughs> and started his legendary run. Or uh, what was it? McLeod? What was that that Omar said last night? McLeod? McLeod. <laughs> yeah, so Cycle, Cycle Cleveland. Watch last night's uh, Sunday episode for some more fun Omar uh, uh, pronunciation of names. When he means to say uh, McLeod. All right. Uh, yeah, so this is... House Secrets 92, first appearance of Swamp Thing. And Swamp Thing 1 through 13 from the uh, first ongoing series. This is early, I'm sorry, late 70s? Right, Jess? You have to probably reassure me of that. Yeah, you're right. Okay. 70s. So 1 through 13. Is that the Alan Moore stuff, or is that right before the Alan Moore? It's right before Alan Moore stuff. Well, this, this book um, is... Uh, Way before the Alan Moore stuff because it only goes has Swamp Thing one through thirteen. Okay. Yeah, Alan Moore took over. When did Moore take over? Was it fourteen or seventeen? Uh, I thought Moore took over on seventeen. I think the chat will have. Um... <laughs> I have to on the chat to give us yeah, I could get up and go look, but I'm I don't feel like it. So <laughs> let the chat do it. <laughs> and the Alan Moore is getting a uh, absolute right. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that was my idea, but I remember I did mention that to uh, Jim Lee. Uh, like oh, nice. Was like, it twenty? More took over on issue twenty. Yeah. Okay. It, it was called. Great. It was called loose ends. He was tying up everything from the previous guys. I'm tempted to get this. I've never read Swamp Thing. 
I would but, actually, I, I would actually say start with the more stuff. I know. I just really want some Swamp Thing action. Yeah, the, but uh, it, more retcons almost every single thing that they do in this damn book. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so this gets written out of existence as soon as that uh, absolutes come out. <laughs> Basic, basically, more more takes every single concept and everything and flips it on its head and says, "Yeah, that's not really what's going on." I think honestly, just the Bernie Wright scenario is worth it, just to just kind of flip through that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's gonna look great. Yeah. Um, what's did we talk about the price on that through in stock trades? Uh, let's see, Swamp Thing, Swamp Thing Bronze Age, forty two percent off. It's twenty five dollars, so it will be fourteen forty nine. Oh, it's a trade paperback. Never mind. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah, the Bronze Age Omni already came out a while Dude, I was ago. like, I was like, why does this sound familiar? Okay, yeah. whatever. It's a different cover, though, I think, right? I yeah. Know. Is that a Carl Kershaw cover? I don't know. All right, so Teen Titans Volume 3, Return to Kid, Kid Flash Rebirth. And then we have Wonder Woman Earth 1, Hardcover Volume 2. That's uh, Grant Morrison, Morrison mm. and Yannick... Uh, Paquette on the yeah. art. Yannick. I think that's how you say it. I think the first one had kind of mixed uh, I love the, criticisms. I yeah. love the first one. I will go on record as saying I loved it. All right. So let's move on to Marvel. There's some couple of big as, omnibuses. Yeah. As we continue the, the week of big, big books. So the Spider-Man, Michelini, and McFarland. Omnibus is being reprinted. Jesus. Uh, this used to be a a whale status of a uh, omnibus for a while, but this is was it was it collect? I have it right here. I could just pull mine off the shelf and look, but you can't see me, so that wouldn't help. Jesus, these these books, man. I'm so happy I'm not collecting as much as I used to. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even imagine. Especially this is peak like video game month when all the top video games of the year start coming. Oh out. yeah, because uh, Christmas season is right here too. So right, yeah. so they cram everything in between October and November, and on top of that, you're getting all these reprints of. But Marvel and DC do the same shit too. They cram yeah. a bunch of omnibuses and absolutes and shit and hardcovers because they want to hit that before uh, the Black Friday sales start going. Mm. Yeah, everybody, this is just that time of the year where everybody just shotgun loads uh, merchandise out there. Yeah. So this is Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 296 through 329, and material from uh, Spectacular Spider-Man Annual number 10. So this is the introduction of Eddie Brock, introduction of Venom, there's some cool like Taskmaster stuff through here as well. Uh, this is just, I mean, this is again just in time for the Venom storyline. This is, I mean, if anybody is a McFarland uh, fan, this is where you need to you need to get this book. Yep. If you're a McFarland Spider-Man fan, it has all the some of the greatest iconic covers on here ever. Uh, the cover for Amazing Spider-Man 316 is one of my favorites, which is the first mm -hmm. Venom cover. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful cover. The uh, 311, I think. Yeah. 311 has that really awesome mis Mysterio cover. There's just some just great, great stuff in here. Um, Chances are, so if you grew up in the 90s, you had a poster on your wall of one of these covers. And this is... this. Yeah, 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 that's for sure. And I would also say this is the better... McFarland's Spider-Man era, uh, based on writing, uh, the Torment stuff isn't the best because that was written and drawn by McFarland. But if you want the groundbreaking, this is the this is the stuff that shot McFarland into the stratosphere when it comes down to like his fan, his fandom, and his star, and you know who he is now really came out of this. Yeah, the spaghetti spider webs. Spaghetti spider webs. Mm -hmm. And that's Avengers 50% by, off. Uh, that's 50% 50 off. off. Right. And then we got Avengers by Jason Aaron, Volume 1, Final Host. This is the current run of Avengers. There's two covers. They're, they're doing that now with these trades. They're, they're doing like a DM uh, variant cover and like a regular cover as well. 
uh, this is the current Avengers going on. A lot of a lot of celestial space cosmic kind of stuff happening in this as well. Uh, I love Ed McGinnis' art. I think he's only on a couple issues though, because that's just kind of how things turn out. We got some Doctor Strange action going on this month as well. Uh, Doctor Strange trade paperback Rise of Darkhold. And then we got Donny Cates' uh, second volume of Doctor Strange in here as well. How many uh, how many issues did Cates do? I'm not sure. He's got two volumes, so he must have done at least ten, right? He's got two volumes out? Ten? Ten issues? Yeah, but this is a smaller volume. This is 80, 386 to 390. That's only like five issues. Huh. Ah, oh, this is... The, okay, this all ties into... Oh, well, this isn't... That doesn't have the damnation stuff in here. Because this is a storyline where the whole idea of the more magic that Doctor Strange uses, the more it takes away from his life. And, you know, there's, there's a price to pay for using magic. Yeah. And a lot of this takes place in uh, in Las Vegas. Ha! <laughs> cool. Uh, and the uh, aforementioned Hellstorm Omnibus by Warren Ellis. Let me just open this up because this cover looks really cool. It's a Bolin cover too. Damn! And this looks like this just looks like some random homeless guy down the street from my house. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. So you get Hellstorm, Prince of Lies, twelve through twenty-one. Oh, Druid's in here. I really like that Dr. Druid storyline, uh, one through four. So it's not really like a Hellstorm title. It's just like Hellstorm character on the bus. But again, 75 bucks, half off. You know, why not take like, a roll of the dice on that one? That looks like something I would have drawn in my middle school, like Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pentagrams everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was that kid. Metal, you're like uh, Metallica and pentagrams. <laughs> uh, here's a, a hard, hard pass. I don't even think I've even ordered this for the store. Uh, somebody on the on the group, uh, Raph, was like, are you going to uh, take pictures of this? And I'm like, nope. I don't even think I even bought it for the store. And that is the Marvel Cinematic uh, Marvel Comics Omnibus. This is all the... <laughs> Wait, that's a thing? That's a thing. That's all those two-issue... I little series that led up to uh, the movies. That's all collected in here. It's a lot. Look at all that stuff. I thought that was a joke by Riley. I didn't know that was a fucking thing. <laughs> oh, it's geez. a thing. And, and it's $125 cover. <laughs> You're going to find that fucker on the discount bin some, this time next year. This time next year? You think it's going to take that long? Whenever, whenever Marvel starts unloading their stuff, there's no way this is gonna sell. Why even, why even waste resources on this and put it out with such a high price tag? You know what? Honestly, um, those two issue series sold well for me. A lot of people kind of came in because they felt it might give them like I don't, not spoilers necessarily, but maybe like a look into what's happening with the movie. And of course, it didn't. Um, but I mean. Why not? Uh, it's 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 free money for the most part to to publish this kind of stuff. Yeah, but I'm just like like the price is high on this. Yeah, I mean if this was like seventy five bucks, half yeah, off, yeah. With the half, after the half off, or with, and then the half off discount. Not even then for me, honestly. But I could see somebody else. I'm, uh, I'm taking a bait for that kind of price. I'm thinking more of the target audience for this. The target audience for this probably isn't going to be me or you or anybody really in the group. It's going to be somebody like that really is just kind of starting to get into comics and things like that. And they're like, oh, cool. It's part of the cinematic universe. You know, it tells the story of the movies and the characters that I like. And then they see $125 price tag slapped on it. They're going to go, I'm not picking that up. Yeah. And then e even when you cut the price in half, with uh, our lovely sponsor, IST, uh, the price is still pretty steep on that. Is this even half off, though? Yeah, it is. Okay. I mean, for that money, it's that's the same price as the Final Crisis on the bus was. Yeah. 
Excuse me, I got the hiccups. I got too much beer. Excuse me. Uh, okay, and then the uh, Spider Gwen hardcover volume three. Yay. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in for this. I mean, not Ooh. right away, but I will be. Uh, I love. I have the first Spider Gwen hardcover. Yeah, I had the first one. Is that the end of Latour's run? Uh, I think so. Yeah, that's a good question. What does it, it go to? Spider Gwen. It goes to twenty. I'm um, not twenty. Uh, twenty three. Yeah. I got to be honest, I can't keep up with Marvel anymore. They keep re I can't either because they rebooted this like right. Yeah. Right? It was like four issues in and they rebooted it for uh, They relaunched this damn book like four times already. Yeah. So this is uh, Spider Spider Man uh, 2016, 12 through 14, and yeah, Spider Gwen. <laughs> Here you go. Look at this. Uh, Spider Gwen 2015. B. Oh my god. Now the years have their own dimension? Yeah, there's a, a separate uh, connotation that has to be assigned to the well, year of some well, of these we'll things. Just go back to a regular number system. Stop. Stop this. But this is a. Uh, you got Jason Latour and Sarah Pacelli on art. Robbie Rodriguez, uh, I think he just did the cover. I don't think it has much to do with the inside art. But yeah, so I mean, I, I like the series. I mean, I, I, you know, I know that's kind of. I like it too. I do too. Yeah, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people don't like this kind of. Not a lot of people, just assholes don't like this book for no reason. Mm. Not saying that if you don't like it, you're an asshole. But if you're a person who likes it for no reason, other than the fact that it's a woman, then yeah, you're an asshole. So uh, what else? Oh, here's here we go. This is it right here, everybody. Thor: Heroes Return on the Bus Volume Two, motherfuckers. This is great. <laughs> this is Jeff. Yeah, Johns. this is the wow. yeah Jeff Johns did a tad bit in it. This is the Dan Jurgen stuff in there. You got uh, Tom Grummet. A little bit of uh, Jim Starlin in here. I, I love, love this Thor series. Love it. This is good stuff. That first omnibus is just fantastic with the John Romita art. I don't care what anybody says, but that John Romita art on that time frame is peak, peak John Romita time for sure. More so than Daredevil, more so than uh, Spider-Man for me it was this uh Thor run on the previous omnibus. But yeah, so what's the discount on this, Jess? Can you let me know? Yep. Just a sec. Thor here is return. 50%. Boom. Not bad. Uh okay. Oh, here's a big one too. Uh reprint the reprint of the Tomb of Dracula on the bus. Oh, yeah, that was out of print for so long. Yeah, this is a hardcore whale for a little bit. I don't understand why. I didn't know there was such a a fan following for these old Bronze Age uh, like horror-type books. Are they even good? Uh, I don't know. The last time I read Tomb of Dracula, I think I was 14. So Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if they're even good or if it's more, oh, shit, it's out of print. I want to own it. Maybe who knows? I mean, it is Marv Wolfman and Jerry Conway on the the writing side of it. Yeah. But and then you also, I mean, there is Tomb of Dracula ten in here, yeah. which is a, a big key issue. I'm. This is great. This is getting reprinted. But I'm just wondering who's a guy got a blow to get a Silver Surfer Omnibus reprint. <laughs> you could, you could start with me. I don't. I can't make any promises. Every everything's getting reprinted except for that damn Silver Surfer Omnibus. Yeah, I'm sure you print it too. I have it, but I have uh, the uh, Eastside Ribbit cover. Nothing wrong with that, but I would prefer the, the Basema cover. Mm -hmm. And what else? Uh, X Men Phoenix in Darkness by Grant Morrison, trade paperback. This is the is this the end of his new X Men run? I wish Riley Omar was on here to kind of really. <laughs> pontificate on what importance it might be within this storyline. 
Is this this is is this part of New X? -Men? Yeah, this is. I think this is the ending of New X Men, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I love that Phil Jimenez cover right here. It's really great. God, that was such a great run. I love Morrison's X Men. I would love to just reread that all together one day, all of us. <laughs> Look at the show. size of Wolverine's claws, there, man. <laughs> <laughs> like three feet long. <laughs> oh man, oh. classics! Yeah. You remember when they were first introduced, like the leather outfits, Gabe, Jess? Yeah, in, in the storyline, you mean, like in New X Men stuff? No, when like New X, when it was announced that Grant Morrison was writing the X Men, they introduced like the leather outfits. Yeah, and everybody called them the the BDSM X Men. Yeah, BDXM, I think it was yeah. called something like that. Yeah, and Emma Frost had a huge camel toe on that cover. Yeah, she's. Yeah. Still a great run. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Dynamite just has this one boys signature edition uh, trade paperback. They've been doing that a lot with the boys. They, they redid everything. Not redid, but they, they're basically reselling their stock signed by uh, Derek Robertson. Cool. I think it's Derek Robertson. Is it both? Do, 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 I can't do. wait for the boys to say. Oh, signed by Grant. Actually, that's signed by Garth Ennis. You know what? I loved the boys up until the whole like clown face fiasco, and I was like, all right, this is getting a little out of control for me. Even for me. Even for you? Even for me. Wow. Hmm. I really I'm willing to kind of go, well, that is also a little bit after that, too, is when Derek Robertson stopped doing the interiors for it, and I really... You know, my interest kind of got cut in half without his art inside of the insides yeah. doing the interiors. Yeah. Wait, Robert. Yeah, I gotta. He stops doing the yeah. interiors. I didn't know that. Yeah, he stopped doing yeah. the interiors like after like I think it's like issue thirty-five ish, maybe. Oh, that sucks. I really like him yeah. on. I haven't gotten that far yet, so that's why I'm asking. And then here's all the uh, weird chibi manga stuff. <laughs> well, that's the final volume of Bleach, I think. This is the final volume of Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> 74 volumes. Motherfucker, man. Oh, my God. Really? Where, where is that up here? You go back. Is it up here? In a... It's right there. Yeah, it's... $10 a piece, bro? Wow. Yeah. Or you can just cool. get the 3-in-1s. The 3-in-1s are cheap, but the paper quality is horrible. Or you get three volumes in one. Why do you have a 3-in-1 uh, volume 24? Yeah. Is that the same thing? Probably. It's the same. It's the same thing. Uh, fourteen ninety nine. It's the same. I'm thing. just saying this is a lot. This is the end of the series too. Then, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You have to click on it. God. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, I mean, three times twenty four. Somebody do the math. Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it is. Twenty four, forty eight. Shit. I'm pretty sure it's not. 69. <laughs> the Omar section. <laughs> this is Omar's manga corner. I'm seeing if there's anything in here that catches my eye or maybe just his eye. John Carpenter's Tales for Halloween Night graphic novel. Ooh. Carpenter. Oh, here we go. This is cool. Uh, Marvelocity from uh, Alex Ross. Oh, that's a big pickup for a lot of people this week. Yeah, this is gonna be fucking sweet. I'm not sure if I, how many I ordered for the store. Um, Dude, he was. He this was is. Uh, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. Mmm. This is a bunch of uh, Alex Ross art. Some of his Marvel Comics arts. There's no story or anything like that. I think it's just a uh, like a uh, coffee table kind of book. Of yeah, book. yeah, it's huge. It's it's pretty big, and uh, it's got commentary on it. It's got commentary on certain pages. Uh, it's mostly just an art book, but it's gorgeous. It's fifty never never before published sketches, paintings, photographs, and working models. 
another precautionary art and a 14 panel portfolio gallery of Marvel's most beloved characters. And Ross has written a 10 page story pitting Spider Man against the Sinister Six. So it's a, is there actually like a, a story in here with art or is it just a script? I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. It doesn't mention. I would imagine there'd be art. Either way, this is a great pickup for that Alex Ross fan. And if you want to see any like art, you know, art aficionado, anyway, that just wants yeah. to see just iconic art. Yeah. And if you're looking to give something for, to Jess for her, you know, the holiday season, there you go. That is a book I would accept as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, then there's volume from My Hero Academia. That's a big one. Volume 12. And there's a Naruto three in one. Volume fifteen. What well, is two different My Hero Academias? What's the difference between a Vigilante and this other one? Uh, oh, Gabe, okay. okay. why are you asking this question? Uh, Vigilante is just a spin-off series. It's not in the oh. same universe. Huh. Moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom Dailies. That's kind of cool. And. This is uh, this is the end, my friend. All right, so that's that, everybody. Uh, if you haven't already, just tell us what you're gonna pick up in the chat. What do you like? What are you getting? What are you? Not just that, but you know, hate on something. What are you passing on? What's a hard pass? Anything written by Chris Ware. I don't think Building Story was on there this week, bro. Good, it shouldn't be. <laughs> Everybody just this is just mass uh, mail bomb Louise with copies of building stories. Uh, they will be kindled so nice when I'm cooking my barbecue that afternoon. Let, let's do that, everybody. Uh, let's see if we can get like 15 copies of it to land on his doorstep. You're just, you're just send me a bunch of boxes full of crap I don't need. Okay, well we went over halls, reads, and previews, and I am. Fading fast from my headache. So, anything else? No. Let's so. talk about Lou. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight. This was good. This was fun. Thanks for having me. Killed some time before midnight tonight. So. <laughs> You're only halfway through your day. I know. I'm only halfway through my day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's mention where we can get all these fine books. You can get them at instocktrades.com where you can get them up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. There's a quarterly Omnibros discount every quarter. Over $50 in the United States gets you free shipping and fabulous service, fabulous packaging. That's instocktrades.com. Oh, yeah. Word. Packing okay. so nice you can use it twice, right? That's right. So, Lou, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at Comics Guide 101 on Facebook and Twitter. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, try and burn him on Twitter. You will get torched. <laughs> I've, I've seen some of his Twitter responses. You do not want to mess with Lou on Twitter. I just I don't have patience for a lot of stupidity. I'm sorry. Gabe, how, <laughs> Gabe, how about you? Where can they find you? Uh, Instagram, you can find me, Gabe Infinity Watch. Follow Omni Bros underscore live on Instagram as well. We are on iTunes. We don't mention that enough. We are on iTunes. So if you ever wanted to just subscribe on there so that you could listen or watch the videos separately from iTunes, uh, from YouTube, uh, you can find Luis, myself, and the Omni Dog on the Facebook group. Uh, the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group. There. <laughs> you can, can find me at Torpedo Comics. Our next, sign our next signing event is Greg Capullo on October 20th. October 19th, I'll be at the System of a Down concert here at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas Ooh, as well. T-Mobile Arena. Yeah, yeah. Did he hook you up with any tickets or anything? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, dude. I'm gonna be there uh, with Greg Capullo. He's gonna be with us. Oh, you're show. fucking kidding me! That's awesome, man. That is amazing. Are you good? Like backstage? I would like backstage. You're gonna be surging everybody. Um, sure. I mean, I've met the whole band before. I've hung out. Well, with them. 
four. Yeah. Oh, lucky. Well, I haven't hung out with Darren. Darren's kind of a dick, it seems like. I don't know the guy personally, but he seems <laughs> a little standoffish. I've always wanted um, Serge. Serge seems Serge, like he's Serge is the nicest guy, dude. He's like one of those like artsy kind of guys. Like you talk oh. to him, he's very coherent and clear, and, and and he's very nice and humble and down to earth and stuff like that. Uh, Chavo's the same way. He's a cool guy mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, John's kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's a good guy, actually. He just had a baby, so uh, congratulations to him. Oh. Tell him I said congrats. I know he doesn't know me, but whatever. Yeah, I'll be, hey, dude, uh, my guy on my YouTube channel said congrats. He's like, okay, okay. cool. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 uh, that's where you can find me, all over the place. And you can find me Omni Dog at Omni Dog's Vault on YouTube. And with that, we will say good night. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the chat. Please subscribe. We're getting close to two thousand subscribers, where we're going to be giving away a boatload of books. So, peace and love. Whoa, I just knocked over Galactus. <coughs> peace Excuse and me. love. And don't listen to what Gabe says. I just burped. That's all I said. Oh, okay. I thought it was some kind of secret message. <laughs>